Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of this, The Disappearance of Adele Badeau by Graham McRae Burnett. I've read Burnett before, he wrote a book called His Bloody Project, which was excellent. Um, this is kind of a literary fiction slash crime mystery novel set in France as well, which was very cool because I am learning French. As always, I'm going to start by reading you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... Manfred Bormann is a loner, socially awkward and perpetually ill at ease. He spends his evenings quietly drinking and surreptitiously observing Adele Badeau, the sullen but alluring waitress at a drab bistro in the unremarkable small French town of Saint-Louis. But one day, Adele simply vanishes into thin air. When Georges Gorski, a detective haunted by his failure to solve one of his first murder cases, is called in to investigate the girl's disappearance, Manfred's repressed world is shaken to its core and he is forced to confront the dark secrets of his past. The disappearance of Adele Badeau is a literary mystery novel that is, at heart, an engrossing psychological portrayal of an outsider pushed to the limit by his own feverish imagination. We get the line, if she did not wish them to stare, why dress in such a provocative manner? Yeah, well if she didn't want to get raped, why did she wear a short skirt? It's not how it works, mate. And Manfred, he was nicknamed uh, Nosferatu by his grandfather because of how he crept around the house keeping close to the walls, which just amused me. And we get this little bit with some great little, uh, great little literature bits, you know? Manfred spent entire days in his room with the shutters closed, lying on his bed staring at the ceiling. His grandparents seemed to care little how he passed his time. He read voraciously, devouring Camus and Sartre and wallowing in the horrors of Dessard. The darker the work, the more he relished it. Sometimes he wrote passages in a notebook, but he invariably tore out the pages and destroyed what he had written, frustrated at the triteness of his efforts. And Manfred meets somebody and he says, It's strange, don't you think, that we met the way we did? I mean, if I hadn't been in this clearing at the exact moment that you came by, if you had taken a different turning, if you hadn't been on holiday here, if I had been born somewhere else. The girl did not look around, but she shrugged her shoulders. You might as well say that whenever two people meet, it's strange. Our meeting is no stranger than any other meeting between two people who don't know each other. But we didn't plan to meet, did we, said Manfred. How could two strangers plan to meet, said the girl. If they had intended to meet, they wouldn't be strangers. That's the kind of the way I think. There's no meaning to everything. Everything's just random. Um, and this is true as well, or at least I've heard that this is true. Um, so Manfred says, Studies have shown that direct mailings are by far the most effective form of advertising. In comparison, television or radio commercials are rather inefficient. Mailouts can be much more easily directed at the target market. They're cheap and can be easily adapted to local communities. But that's also the same reason why that's since been taken over by social media, because you can be even more targeted with that, you know? And I want to read this out because this is a reference to The Outsider by Camus, which I read not too long ago. Once or twice in previous years, the pairs had chatted uneasily for a few minutes after class. Shortly after the death of his mother, Manfred had written an essay on The Outsider. The real shock of The Outsider, who wrote, is not Merceau's indifference to his mother's death. Rather, it is the animosity of others towards this indifference. Becco had read those lines back to Manfred and asked him what he meant. Manfred shrugged. He was both flattered by Beko's attention and embarrassed. In truth, he was not sure what he meant and he suspected that Beko was using this in a, as an attempt to get him to open up about his own bereavement. When Manfred failed to articulate anything, the conversation fizzled out. Well, it's an excellent essay, Beko had said, handing it back. He says he doesn't make a habit of drinking in his apartment. There's something wretched about drinking at home. I've kind of tried to drink at home less, although recently I've fallen off that a little bit, you know. And Gorski says, uh, he took off his handkerchief and mopped his brow. Celine maintained that sweating was a lower class habit, and it was true. In 22 years of marriage, he'd never seen his wife perspire. Biggie's here to say hello, aren't you, Biggie? And I like this as well, because this is very true. So Manfred had always hated Saturdays. During the week, even if one hated one's job, one went to work because one had to, because there was no choice in the matter. People congregated in their workplaces with a sense of communal resignation. It was relatively easy to give the appearance of being a normal member of society. Weekends were different. One was expected to enjoy oneself, to take part in healthy outdoor pursuits, family or social events. Manfred had never enjoyed such activities. If he read books or went to the cinema, it was not so much because he enjoyed doing so, but because it filled the hours. And uh, he says it kind of gives him something he can then talk to people about when he's back in the office and people say, what did you do at the weekend? He's trying to like fake being a human, you know? And there's a reference to one of the characters going skinny dipping. And I just thought that was funny because I'd had a conversation about skinny dipping with my other half, like just before I came across that. But yeah, there's not too much I want to say about the appearance of Adele, uh, the disappearance of Adele Bado. It is a very kind of very beautifully written novel. Um, the murder mystery to it kind of plays like a second secondary part, but it is still enjoyable as a murder mystery. And there are you know twists and turns along the way. Characterization is great as well. I really enjoyed the setting too, uh, and it just has that kind of timeless feel that a, a good book should have. You know, sorry about my cat. What are you doing, Biggie? You're getting right in the way. I'm trying to talk to people, aren't I? 
Um, but yeah, overall, I gave The Disappearance of Adele Bado by Graham McRae Burnett a solid 4 out of 5, and I'm looking forward to reading more of this author's work. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.